Hey everybody, welcome to the Renaissance Woodworker. In my last live broadcast of this perch build, I kind of skipped over the stretchers to the end because I was running out of time. Well, I've gotten some intervening questions after that, just about some details about the stretcher. So I decided I would go out and put out kind of a port 3.5 video where I talk about exactly how I go about laying out the stretcher sizes and quickly how I turn it. The turning profile is actually quite simple and just to take off of what we've already done. Let me walk you through this step by step so that you're ready to install the stretchers during my next live broadcast. Okay, I've just put a band-aid on a girth hitch around a loop on a piece of string here and just put a slip knot in and the band-aid just gives it a little bit of flex so I can pull this up tight, but not so tight that I'm actually compressing the legs in. And that's important because the stance that it sits here naturally is really the spacing that I want. And in the live session, I just wrapped a rubber band around the whole thing, but it puts it under so much tension it actually pulled the legs unnaturally close together. So now I can grab a ruler and I can figure out my distance from shoulder to shoulder, because that's really the important part here. And I'll just use one of these zigzag rulers because it's got this little brass part that slides out and it can give me an exact measurement. And I'm measuring from that crease, that kind of bamboo crease we have in the turning. And this captures my dimension, which in my case is 12 and about 13 sixteenths. Doesn't really matter what that dimension is because I have it captured right here. So I can use this to lay out the shoulder to shoulder dimension on my stretchers. Now I'm going to create a 5 8 inch tenon that projects, let's say, three quarters. I'm what? an inch and three eighths. So I can actually, I'll make an inch long tenon. I've got enough space there with an inch long tenon because I'll be using a spoon bit to drill this out. And a spoon bit doesn't have an extra lead point that could poke out the other side. If you're using an auger bit or something like that, that's got a longer lead point, you're gonna need to foreshorten that tenon so it doesn't poke out the opposite side. So I'm going to create a stretcher with this dimension from shoulder to shoulder and an inch long tenon on either side. But before we move away from here, I can take the distance between the string and set that as the thickest part of my stretcher. So I'm at one and a quarter inches. So that center swell here will be one and a quarter inches wide. And then I need to set the dimension of the cross stretcher here, which is going to be the distance from this string to that front crease. So let's extend this out and I'm at nine and seven eighths from shoulder to shoulder. And again, I'll add a one inch tenon on either side. So nine and seven eighths with a one inch tenon on either side. And I'll go ahead and make it the same one and a quarter inch diameter. Now you can take those dimensions and actually lay out another pattern if you want. The thing I should warn you of though, if you're gonna use this pattern to reproduce perch tools going forward, these dimensions may change. I'm pulling these dimensions directly from my stool here. So you don't necessarily wanna go ahead and blindly turn stretchers going forward because it might vary ever so slightly. But for the sake of this demonstration and for ease of layout while I'm over at the lathe, I'm gonna go ahead and plug them onto the backside of my template here. I've just taken my measurements right off the ruler and transferred them onto this board. And I'll go ahead and square lines up first this is the shoulder to shoulder dimension and add an inch onto that for the tenon. And I've got my total blank length here. Now I can measure the distance between the shoulders to find the center, a little bit fat of seven inches. There's my center point. And this is going to be one and a quarter inch diameter. Down here, the tenon will be a five eighths inch diameter. 
and I'm not going to have shoulders here, so this swell will just blend. So if we go, let's go ahead and for fun. Hey, look at that. That's already one and a quarter inches. So we'll have kind of this swell that just comes down. to five-eighths of an inch, and that would be my cross stretcher. My T stretcher is basically the same principle here. I've laid it in the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder dimension, add on an inch, I'll kind of eyeball the center of that. We're going to say that's one and a quarter inches, five-eighths, five eighths. So now I've got everything I need to lay out my stretchers on the lathe. Now all that stock that I originally sized with a draw knife, I've still got several pieces of that that are long enough that I could cross cut and actually get my long stretcher and my short stretcher. So I'll just go ahead and work this round. Give me a nice smooth surface to lay out my marks. Now I'll bring my template to bear here, and I've cut my blank to be just a little bit longer than what I need. And let's go ahead and mark that center line. And then most importantly, I want to get these shoulders right. But cut yourself a little bit of slack here because recognize there is actually no shoulder here. It's just going to kind of blend into the rest of the shape. So I don't really have to worry about getting that dimension absolutely perfect. Now I'm one and a quarter at the center. Let me go ahead and size that dimension first. One and a quarter. And down here I want to go for five eighths. But I'm actually going to size it a little bit over that to three quarters. Now I just need to shape it down. Right down here on the tenon, I'm going to use actually one of my easy wood tools. I find these are just super efficient for shaping a straight tenon like this. Nice and consistent, but again, ever so slightly oversized. All right, so I'll take my two stretchers, bring them back over to the bench, and first I will saw them to final length and then I'll use a 5 8 inch tenon cutter from Veritas and I'll use that to trim down that slightly oversized tenon that I left on the ends. So grab your stretcher, slot it into the tenon cutter and it should center nicely because we're really close. That three quarter inch diameter gets me really close. But I do want to just kind of sight down it and make sure that I'm level in there. So I'll kind of hold it out and I can adjust if necessary. 
And you can see the part that comes out the other end, it's 5 eighths of an inch. This is kind of like an endless pencil sharpener. I suppose if I just kept twisting, I could turn this entire stretcher into a 5 eighths inch dowel. But really, I'm just looking for a piece about an inch long, just about an inch long sticking out the end of this tenon cutter. There we go, there's an inch. So now I just wanna come back and just ever so slightly clean up this little bit of a shoulder. The transition here is just a little too abrupt. So I've taken my stretcher and locked it in the vise and I'm just gonna come back with a spoke shave and just blend away any shoulder you've created. And one of the reasons I like using those Veritas tenon cutters is even if it cuts into the main part here, it gives it a nice taper. So it's actually really easy to clean this whole thing up. Shave horse or the shave pony would be great for this as well. I just really didn't feel like setting it back up for such a simple task like this. And once you've got that shoulder blended away, I'm gonna come back and chamfer off the edge of the tenon just so that it doesn't hang up in the hole as we assemble it. Just a very, very slight chamfer. Not a big deal here. And this is why I wasn't terribly concerned about getting that shoulder to shoulder dimension exact because any lip that was there that's slightly bigger than the 5 eighths has now been blended away. So really, I've got the ability to drive this up tight and it may actually come a little bit inside those shoulders and really kind of house that joint and cinch it up really, really tight. So I'm not saying you want to blow past that shoulder line by an eighth of an inch, but you do have just a little bit of wiggle room to play with here. So now my stretchers are ready to go. So tune into my last live broadcast on this in which I will drill all the holes for the stretcher, glue everything up, and finish off this build.